watching. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Share chiller for for the fountains. Each fountain has its own chiller, and it should line up one, two, three, one, two, three. It's supposed to. So you have to determine which one goes to what. Um, what the chiller does is carbonates the water and then chills it and then circulates it up to the fountain and back. That's what that circulator does. So you see all that bundle tubing right there. All of the carbonated water lines go up into that one bundle. So they're all constantly circulating up and back. So when you open that valve, you get cold carbonated water out of it. Even though it has a cold plate, it's technically supposed to reduce the amount of ice you need to keep everything cold. That's why they have the chillers. Um, so the first thing we have is the carbonator. This is your carbonator. You have water comes in and it goes right up onto the pump. Then it goes down into a cooling coil, which then comes back up and goes into the tank. So the carbonator tank is sitting in that cold water. It's just full of water. And there's refrigeration lines that run in and around there, which form an ice bank, which keeps all that cold. There's an agitator motor in the middle, which hangs down into the middle of that water bath that has a little propeller on it. It's constantly spinning to keep that water agitated in there. If it doesn't keep it agitated, any water, when that thing runs and it brings in warm water, it, you, you're going to lose contact with the cold water. <clears throat> and it'll end up flat and warm. Just without that little propeller going, it'll cause a problem. However, you'll never know it because as it's circulating up and back, it's also circulating with the other two. So the other two chillers are going to help keep that warm water cold. So if you see the agitator not running, replace it. If the agitator motor is not running, replace it. <clears throat> so the only way you can really tell is you look in here with all the water, and you'll see all the water agitating around there. If it's Smooth and it's not running. Yeah, and that motor's red hot. That's the problem. So when you take that motor out, there's two copper strips that hang down. Make sure you put those back on. Is that what that does? Is act like a heat sink. So they stick down into that cold water and transfer up to the motor. It helps keep that motor cool. Crazy, but that's what it's for. So make sure you put them back on if you ever replace them. Um, there's three coils inside that water bath. We have plain water comes in, and there's a little coil right up front here that sits down in here, and it comes back out. So it kind of pre-chills the plain water. The water line comes in, goes onto the pump, out of the pump, into another coil, and then into the tank. <clears throat> the other coil is out of the tank, into the coil, and then back out. So it comes out, goes onto the pump, goes up to the fountain, back onto one of these lines, this one, and it just keeps circulating that cold carbonated water. <clears throat> the way it carbonates it is 
via a probe, okay. which looks like this. All right. That probe sits down in that tank and connects up to this connector. That's right there. Okay, so this is your carbonated probe, which sits down in the tank. Uh, the liquid level control, um, I'm not going to take it, it's in there. The little circuit board. There's a low, a high, and a ground. Everything works off a of ground. That's why there's a ground wire on here. You want to make sure that that ground wire is always tight. Yep. So what happens is, as as you get fountain drinks and the carbonated water goes down in the tank, it'll go down below that first probe. Nothing happens until it gets down below that one. Now there's no continuity to ground. The board is going to tell this pump to come on and start filling this tank with water. So it's going to come back up past this probe until it gets to this one. Then it'll shut off. If it just did the top one, it would just be on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. You burn the pump up. So that's how that works. Um, this pump is a brass carbonator pump which will pump the pressure up to almost 350 pounds of pressure. So the reason for that is that tank is always full of CO2. As that pump comes on, it's spraying that water into that tank. And as it's spraying it in, it's absorbing all the CO2. And that's how you get carbonated water. So as it fills up and shuts off, this circulator pump right here is constantly circulating that cold carbonated water up and back. The only way it's being dispensed, what's pushing it out, is CO2 pressure. The CO2 pressure on the tank, when you open that valve, it's that CO2 pressure that's actually coming out the valve. So you've probably all gone to the fountain and pushed the lever and it's it's just CO2. That's all it is. So if something's wrong with the carbonator. It's not working. You come back here and you take the wire off the probe and it kicks on. You put it back and it shuts off. Okay, so there's something wrong in that tank. Could be the probe. It could not. That probe was perfectly fine until... You look at it a little closer, and you'll see that it's split. So what that does is you'll have moisture in there, which shorts between those two probes, and it ain't coming on. It's not going to come on. So in order to repair that, you got to change this probe. In order to do that, you got to get the pressure out of this tank. So you're going to turn the water off, which it should have a shutoff valve on the water line, and turn the carbonator off up top. That's your carbonator switch. There's a little slot in the top cover where you can turn that off. You're going to go up front. Yep, thank you. Go up front and pull on that little paddle put your finger on the valve and just bleed the carbonated water out until it starts spitting. Although in this case, there is nothing in it because it hasn't been running because the probe is dead. In that case, you just turn the CO2 off and open that little pressure relief until all the CO2 empties out. You got no pressure. Now you can take that probe out and replace it. In order to start it back up, close it, turn the CO2 on, let the system fill up with CO2, turn the water on, turn the carbonator on, it'll run until it fills up the tank, and then it'll shut off. All right? So the other thing is, 
you take the wire off the probe and it still does, it doesn't come on. So it could be in the board or the motor. You got to take the cover off the back of the motor and see if you've got power going to that motor. If you have power going to it and it's not coming on, then obviously it's the motor. So I've seen our own fountain vendors, not going to name the company, come in on a P1, pump was leaking on the pump. They put a stainless steel circulator pump in place of it. Well, those pumps are just meant to just circulate. They're not meant to pump up pressure. So the next day, it's all our drinks are flat. Why? Put the wrong pump in. Not the beverage company that did that. So make sure it's a brass carbonator pump, stainless steel circulator pump. Um, yeah. Per, per fifty gallon per minute. On a recharge, what's it on a brass? Well, three fifty, three fifty on a brass. But that's only momentarily. There's a bypass in there. It's spring loaded. If it gets up past 350, it just bypasses it so you don't ruin the pump. Um, this switch on the carbonator, let's say they turned the water off. The city was working on the water out in the, on the street and they turned the water off. Um, this thing tried to run with no water on it. Um, there's a safety on that board for four minutes or seven minutes. They're usually all set for seven minutes. That once this thing calls to run, if it doesn't shut off within seven minutes, it trips it out and it won't come back on. You turn this off, turn it back on, and it comes on, that safety trips and you know why. Whatever reason, the water was off, the pump is bad, the motor's bad. Um, so if you turn it off and turn it back on, you know that that safety trip for some reason, whichever it might be, pump, motor, or water being on. This is a pump saver. The pump saver is added to these units when they're installed by Gulf Ice. They don't come with it. They're added per racetrack's instructions. Um, and what that is supposed to do is if you lose water pressure, that little green light comes on and it kills power to both of these pumps. These things will leak. You'll be dripping water and leaking all over the place. If you see one leaking, don't touch it. Oh, yeah. It'll knock you on your ass because there's power in it. When it's leaking, if you touch it, you're gonna you're gonna go for a little ride. <laughs> so always unplug it, unplug it, turn the water off. Take this little this little pin out. Pop it off, pop the new one on, unplug it, turn the water off, and then, then you can change it. Then you can change it. Unplug over from the wall. Unplug it from the wall. And you know what? And I had the cover on. It was digging, and I just touched the cover. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, I mean, there's electric in it. It's just a little diaphragm in there, that's all, against the pressure switch. And when they leak, I've done it. I touched it. Knocked me on my ass. So. Like I said, as soon as you have water leaking out, as soon as it's leaking, make sure you're going to pull one off. That's for the circulator. Yep. It says uh, research pump switch 
And this usually would have a thing on the top that says carbonator switch. Okay. Um, CO2 line. Oh, yeah. Overflow drain. Yep. This tank does go though. Remember, I asked you probably one time how you fill that tank up? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, right. Out of water. Okay. So that's another thing. Well, it'll squish in. Once the water gets down below the the blade on this little agitator, it'll just start sloshing it around. So if you get to one that's got no um, water in it or low water, it's probably not refrigerated properly. Without the refrigeration on it, that water spinning there is just going to evaporate. And it'll, it'll, you'll get nothing in it. So most of the time it's this, which is called the ice bank control, which controls the the thickness of that ice bank that's down in five here. So that's replaceable. We have them on our trucks. Um, going back to why this carbonator will or will not work. Um, the other thing that can happen is that ice bank is right aside of this tank. And if you get like water dripping in it and you can't tell, that refrigeration system is going to run a little abnormally. And it may freeze heavier at the bottom than it will at the top of that ice bank. And it starts to freeze into the tank. It'll actually freeze the water in the bottom of that tank. So when you get nothing but syrup out and everything looks fine, it's probably frozen in the bottom of that. Um, easy way to, to frost it at that point is siphon, take a bucket of hot water and set it up top and let it siphon into here and let it switch around and it'll help melt that ice tank. Let it run for a couple minutes and then you got to siphon it out into a drain or a bucket. You just keep doing that a couple of times with hot water. Before you know it, that ice tank is melting. Well, no, set, the cover will be on the top. Set the bucket on top and take a little hose and siphon it down in there. Just to stand here and pour it in and take it forever. I take my, I used to take my hose. A garden hose. Yep. You just put it right inside. Take the garden hose. Yep. You put it right inside here. But you got to siphon it out just this fast. And then I, what I do is I make sure the zip is open. Sometimes I'll open the bottom one also. That way it drains yeah. at the same time it's putting hot water in. Right. It does it really quick. That's the only reason I do The other thing that can happen is when you go to get a drink and it's just air, is that ice bank in there, it'll freeze solid. It'll just keep freezing, freezing, freezing until you look in there and it's nothing but white. It's frozen solid. That control has stopped flowing. At that point, you're going to have to unplug it. And one of two things, one is really not an option, is to leave that fountain down for a couple of days, which probably isn't an option. Um, or you can disconnect it and take these carbonated water lines and hook it up to a chiller aside of it. It's quite the little project, but it's a way to get the fountain back up and running. The reason you have to disconnect it is you don't know those three coils that are in there, it could have froze one and split it. So if you leave it all connected up and it starts to defrost and now that's split, you're going to have water everywhere. Everywhere. So I have one now that I have off right now, completely disconnected, but I've connected it up to the chiller side of it so the fountain's working. But this thing is, is off. Which are the two lines that you have to The two carbonated water lines. Really, you only need one. So 
you could find the two that you have. One comes out and one goes in. You're going to plug one of them and connect the other one up to the other line. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever pinched off a water line. Okay. Um, I want to get a pair of pinch off tools. Pause that for a second. Pinch off water lines with, I use a pair of needle nose vice grip. They've probably supplied you all with these, which are pinch off tools. If you have these, throw them out. <laughs> Don't use them. Because if you notice, when you close it, it's pinched at this end. So if you do this on a water line, well, look, you can see how this line is. See how that's pinched right there? That's going to close down crooked. And this side here is going to pinch. And you'll actually split it. And you'll be back in a day or two because that line now has a little pinhole in it, right where this end pinched it too much, too far. A pair of needle nose, they clamp down kind of evenly. So I've taken these and filed off the grooves, and it works great. You can pinch it off. You can cardboard in it. Yeah, you can do that. Piece of cardboard in it. It will not. It will not crush that. It won't break that line. It won't break it. So just make sure that you get it tight enough to close them off. That's all. That's it. You don't have that. I hate these things. You can use those. You can use those. You can throw away. I keep mine because those actually, these are refrigeration. Pinch off fire. I don't know if anybody knows this. This is for actually pinch it off copper tubing. That's what they're for. Right. Yeah, those. 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 I keep like three of these. So anytime you pinch off a line when you're done with it, just go back and reshape it a little. Why be crossing? Well, and let's say you got to turn the water off for this, but there's no valve. You can't. There's no shut off valve. You can pinch it off. Well, what the? It so stops the, the water. It's like shutting it off. Yeah. Okay, that's how you shut the water off. Okay. Right. Okay. And that would concentrate on the process. Right. Okay. So if you've got to connect up to another chiller. All right, this one's dead. You got to depressurize. You're gonna hook up to this line. You got to get this line over to the other chiller. The other chiller, you take that circulate that line that's circulating. Turn off the circulator. You're gonna pinch on two sides of it. Cut that line. Now you got them pinched off. There's no pressure there. Put a key in it and run it over to this one. Clamp them, unpinch it. Now you've got carbonated water going from that to this while this is defrosting. And that's only if it's frozen solid. You'll be there for hours if you're going to try and defrost it. Once you get that other fountain connected up to it, and both or if all three fountains are working, that can stay off for two weeks. It doesn't matter. When you have time, then go back. And what you're going to do is change this ice bank control. So, because that's the whole problem. That's why it froze up. It's stuck. So over on the ice bank, where it goes down in the water bath, so it's got a piece of permagum on it. Got it? All the areas they can put that probe. The worst place they could have put it. I can't get it. Anyway, there's a little cotter pin in there. Take that cotter pin out. And that, yep. Take that nut off. Oh, wait. 
Is that kind of? No. Yeah, it's just a little screw, hex head screw come out. Then that potter pin will pull out. This whole thing will pull up out of there. You got to kind of bend it away from here as you're taking it out. And you'll see there's a little metal bracket that it's on. So there's a plastic tube that's wire tied to the refrigeration line that that slides down into that plastic tube. And it stops at the bottom. Um, that's how you replace that. Obviously unplug it first before you do any of that. That's how you get that out. Um, let me see my paper. Oh, show her. Oh, very important. On a carbonated water line, that's why there's a stainless steel pump on here. That's why all these fittings are stainless steel. Um, you can use brass, brass fittings on water. You can use brass fittings on CO2. But if you use a brass fitting on carbonated water, it, it eats it up in no time, and there'll be nothing left of it. It's some kind of chemical reaction once you mix the water and the CO2 together that reacts with the brass. You take a thick piece of, of copper tubing or brass and you put it in there as a slicer in a week's time, that piece of copper tubing will be paper thin if it even exists at all. It's a chemical reaction that will eat that brass or copper away. So anytime on a carbonated water line, it has to be a stainless steel fitting. That's why we have all those stainless steel fittings in our truck. That's why they're not brass or plastic. Plastic can work, but there's too much pressure on it for plastic. Same thing that we're talking about right here. Yep. Any, any fitting, a T. Okay. So here's a T. That's stainless okay. steel. Okay, okay, okay. So no plastic. Never right use there. brass okay. or copper on it. If if you notice in front of the FCD machine, the drain pan has brass fittings in it. Those yeah. things will corrode and leak. They corrode because there's carbonated water always sitting in there, and it's eating the brass away. You see the threads, which are on the outside of the video. It's eating that brass away to the point where it's, you shine a light down and you can see right through. There should be stainless steel or plastic drain pan fittings in there. Put them on five years. So on a carbonate, that's why all this stuff is stainless steel. On a carbonated water line, never use uh, brass or copper. That's all I got on the chiller. I, I know that. Um, now you've went through the trouble of depressurizing this system. You're going to have to take these stainless steel fittings out of here. So you're going to cut that tubing off. Um, with the Oedeker tool, you've got to cut these clamps off. Get the tubing off. Now you've got to take these fittings out. When you're going to put the new fittings in the new pump, the way I do it is I'll put some Teflon tape around those fittings, but then also put just a little bit of pipe dope on it. Because the worst thing you can do is put Teflon tape on there, tighten them up, get the system all back up and running and it freaking leaks right at that city. Now you gotta take it all back apart and take them out again and do it again. So I just double it up with a little bit of pipe dope over the Teflon tape. I've never had one leak. You get like a little tube of pipe dope. 
heart goes. Tough on heart feel. Home Depot has a little too. Yeah, same kind of stuff. Same kind of stuff. Where are you go? That's what I do. That's what I do. You can you can put enough Teflon tape on there and tighten it down enough, but all you need is one little bubble to come out, and it's gonna leak down the road, and you're gonna get a call back that it's leaking. Right. So the other thing is on top of this tank, the top of this carbonator tank, there's check valves. Right here on this CO2 line is a check valve. On the water line is a double check valve. And what is in there is a little spring-loaded ball that prevents the CO2's coming in this way, but it can't come back out because that little ball is pushing against an O-ring. Um, the way to know when that water, that double check valve has failed is you're going to get water out of a faucet that's carbonated. Or you're going to flush a toilet and it's going to go <laughs> because that CO2 in that tank has made its way back through that check valve, back through the water line, into the system. I've seen coffee brewed with carbonated water. How are you possibly ever going to find that? It's one of those check valves. One of these check valves is there. So you can take them apart. You can take those check valves apart, and normally the O-ring is just out of place. You can take it all apart, put it back. Be careful, because there's little springs in there. The little silver ball, like a little ball bearing, and it'll go fine. The CO2 is coming through that valve and feeding back into the water line. The fan I had was a filtered water. It was a water. carbonated. That's why that's a double check valve. So that doesn't happen. They're saying, hey, the water tastes carbonated on the filter. But you got to carbonate the water. Well, the only other thing that could cause that is that block up on the fountain that has the water and the carbonate has a split, and one's bleeding over into the other. Oh, the block is up. And the only way to do that, how do you how would you know? Well, the only way to check, probably the easiest way to check it would be here, is to turn the water off and loosen this nut. You got CO2 coming out of here. There's your problem. Just turn the water off. You shouldn't get anything coming out of here. Turn the water off. Turn the water off. Because that is, the water comes into the pump, down into the coil, and up onto this tank. So once you turn the water off, you can loosen that. You shouldn't get anything out of it. So it's bubbling out. You got CO2 coming out. That's your problem. Then you can take them apart and usually fix what's wrong in them. You got to depressurize that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. So the CO2 usually isn't an issue. Where is that? Where CO2 is going to go to CO2? And yeah. That's why it's only a little single check valve. The water. That's a good thing. It what? It also cause like a leak from the actual CO2. Well, the, um, yeah, the CO2 tank will start icing up. Oh, shit, you can't find it. Well, here the way to tell is use your little pinch off and go up to the CO2 line above the FCB machine. Pinch it off. Turn that valve off. If the pressure drops. Okay, it's not the FCB machine. Now go behind the fountain. Keep checking until you turn the valve off and the CO2 stays. That's where it's at. What were you going to ask me?
try and, and show all your stores, the managers, how to disconnect the airline. Because I just had one of my stores had a new manager. The pump was leaking air. They couldn't disconnect it. Went out to a vendor because it drained all the air pressure out. It had no syrups for the fountain, no syrups for the frozen because they couldn't disconnect that ear line. So we had to pay a vendor time and a half to come out and change a flow jet. So make sure you show all your GMs how to disconnect that air line when it's fishing. Um, these flow jet pumps fail because they get moisture in the air line. Well, because we use an air compressor, if we were to use CO2 pressure, which is a dry gas on those pumps, they'd last forever. They'd last 15 years. So it's the moisture that makes them go bad so bad? Because we use an air compressor, which is humid, and that air compressor draws in air, compresses it, and there's moisture in that air line. Guaranteed you open that valve right now. Well, you could take one off of here. Yeah, guaranteed. Guaranteed it's water. No, take the bottom one off. So that's why they fail, because of the moisture. So you're going to have, when that pump, pump, it rusts because of the moisture in there. And then it gets stuck. And it, it just hits it. Um, and there's nothing we can do at this point but swap them out. That's it. Um, we have some flavors that are considered pungent flavors. And that would be anything that's cherry, orange, root beer, Dr. Pepper. Um, and what pungent means is it gets in the line and it's absorbed into the tubing and you can't get it out. Luckily, all this tubing... <clears throat> is what's called a barrier tubing. Um, and it has a thin film inside of it that will not allow any of the flavor to be absorbed into the tubing. However, this tubing will split in the middle of the line, just for no reason. Uh, um, Oh, and it'll make a mess, too. I have a good question for you. Have you ever seen where the CO2 from a pump will blow up the bag? Oh, yeah. The bag? I'll make that bag blow yes. up. Yes. No Something internally in the pump has broken, and it let the CO2 go. It's like three times the size. It's full of CO2. Oh, I that. Yep. Yeah, the pump. The pump. The pump. Yeah, back. The pump. 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 The bag up. That one, yeah, I've seen him actually explode the bag before. Holy It can happen. So if you go out and you see one, that's, they say, oh, it's, it's, it looks like it's blowing the bag up. Yeah, you better change that pump. Right. So... The other thing that can happen is the changeover valves, where you can hook two bags up, right? The little button that pulls. So what happens is when that one bag empties out, that pump, this pump sucks the syrup out of the bags. So when one empties out, it creates a vacuum, like putting your hand over a vacuum, and that little changeover valve switches over to the full one. If that rubber diaphragm in there has failed and you have one bat, one box above the other instead of a side of it, that top one will drain into the bottom one and that'll balloon up also. Ooh. Right? So here is a piece of tubing that has split open and you can see that little tiny film that's that value tube. This thing's ready to burst. And, yep. Okay, so that little film 
is in there. And that thing is going to pass that around. That thing is eventually going to bulge out. And when that thing lets go, you're going to empty that div all over the wall. So if you ever see that, fix it. And you see that split. That split is right. So you are supposed to be replacing that tubing. Um, we have a fountain reset coming up. I don't know what the details of it are, but the vent. Okay, it's on that tank. On the tank itself is a, a little valve. Anytime you're back there, put a cup under it, open it up, and that's going to drain the water out of that tank. That's going to keep the water from getting in the system and making the pumps go. I've, opened, I've gone in and opened them up. Yeah, it'll come out. When you open it. What? Yeah, stand back. <laughs> well, don't open it all the way. It's just kind of. I'm sure you guys have all worked on FCB machines, on the Viper. And you're going to fill them, and you're filling it, and all of a sudden it's beeping at you. Syrup out. What the hell is syrup out? It's funny. And then all of a sudden it kicks back in. So the reason for that is there's too much variance in the pressure switch on the air compressor. So it runs out of pressure before it comes back on. I always set the pressure up higher. However, on the newer stores, the 6Ks and up, when they've installed all this equipment, they've hooked the flow jet pumps up for the FCD machines to CO2. They hook them up to the CO2 tank because that's a constant pressure. It's always stays the same. And you'll probably never see a syrup error when you're filling an FCD machine when they're on CO2. Uh, maybe, yes. Right, right. That's another, that's another ball game. So, right, so you will see them. Why don't they hook them all the CO2? So, so there's a regulator for all the the air, comp there's one back here behind Tim. So this regulator should be set between 70 and 80 for all these flow jet pumps. If you ever adjust that, you probably now have changed the bricks on all your pump, all your fountain valves. So if you change CO2 pressure, you change air pressure, you're probably gonna have to bricks all your valves. And you may just have to go and turn it a quarter turn to get it. If, if you go, if, if your pressures are erratic, or there's not enough flow, it's not set high enough, and you, it could be set at 40. People come back here and mess with this stuff, and they don't know what they're doing. And now, all of a sudden, now it's not working, and that's because somebody adjusted. That's what you well, where, where, where do you adjust it? Right here? Right here, this screw. This right here. Yep. That's right again. Where it's, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so every every store is going to have one of these valves somewhere. That's a air or CO2. In case that air compressor dies, takes a crap, you turn it over to CO2. It should be marked air or CO2. It should be marked emergency. It should be marked emergency, right? Um, and now you turn it to CO2. Now everything runs on CO2 pressure. Get all your pumps back up and running, so we can replace that. Um, this one here, I don't know why they have it. That was at one time. Every store was going to have a little CO2 tank sitting here as a backup in case the big one emptied out. You could flip it over to backup. And it would run on this till they fill this up. Well, they found out the cost of a little CO2 tank for every store. And plus they're dated. They have to be tested. You can have one sitting here for 10 years and never use it. Now it's out of date. Now we have to pay to test it. So they put the kibosh on that. 
But if you got no CO2 anywhere, check to make sure that's not turned to back up where it's not hooked to anywhere. I've had it happen. Emergency call in the middle of the night, uh, and it's turned to back up. You turn it back up, and everything comes on. There's nothing connected to it. Everything. You got no CO2. Nothing. Because that CO2 line comes up and goes right into you. So once you shut that off, it's like turning this off. Oh, okay, okay. So just to verify, you get that air of the syrup out of the Well, when those air compressors are put in, you don't want to just put it in and plug it in. Make sure that pressure goes up to above 100 when it shuts off. Because even the air compressors that they put in, they're going to build a brand new store. Gulf Fight comes in and puts all this stuff in. They put the air compressor in. It cuts in at 80 and cuts out at 60. We run these between 70 and 80. If it goes down to 60 before it comes back on, what's going to happen? So what does happen is somebody's going to get a soda. Now at 60 pounds of syrup pressure, now you got not enough syrup. When the air compressor comes back on and it's 80, now you got the right. So you're going to have inconsistent drinks. Just it up with the pressure switch on the compressor to kick in at 80 and out at 100. It's just the turn of a screw a couple of times. Probably because you want to fill one at a time. Because you're out drawing, there's a water booster pump inside the FCB machine that supplies that water pressure to it. If you're trying to fill them all, you're out drawing with that pump and handle. Then you either have a problem with that water booster pump or with the water pressure sensor. One of those two. Or the water, water filters are blocked. So when you see that pressure drop down, it's starving it. Boom, there goes that sensor saying you don't have enough water. So it could be the filters. Filters are extremely important, but we always seem to yeah, out of sight, out of mind. This booster pump pumps it up to like 100 pounds of pressure. This tank, on the half of the tank has a rubber bladder on it, and the other tank outside has water. So you get air pressure and water pressure. And that allows the expansion of allowing that thing to go up to 100 pounds of pressure. Um, then there's a regulator on it after we boost it up. Uh, why? I don't know. It's just to have a little bit of extra pressure there. But what can happen is this regulator will fail. Now you're putting 100 pounds of water pressure into this chiller, and it only has 60 pounds of CO2 pressure. What's going to happen? That water is higher than the CO2. You're going to, the water is going to overpower the CO2, and you're going to have flat drink. You got to change, no, well, little. These regulators are in the warehouse. Keep one on your truck. 